Amy went through breast cancer um, treatment at Roswell in 2009. So she, had, she was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer and she had to go through major surgery. She had to go through chemotherapy and uh, when it appeared that she was going to be you know, coming out healthy, uh, I started just thinking about ways to get back to Roswell. You know, it's a place that saved her life, so we thought, you know, let's, let's try to do something to give back. I thought about doing something like a charity hockey game. We so talked about it all the time. We talked about it all the time. Never really took legs. Fast forward to 2016. My mom had been diagnosed a couple years prior with cancer. She ended up passing away May of 16. I approached Amy and said, hey, remember that idea? I think I, I think we want to do it. Hockey's in my blood, so I talked to a couple people, and uh, I didn't even tell her at the time. Well, hockey can be a pretty grueling sport, even for the pros in the best shape, but imagine playing for 11 straight this days. This is an awesome idea. They were going to play 11 days of hockey, 24 hours a day. It was to break the world's record for the longest game of hockey ever played and to raise $1 million for cancer research at Roswell Park. This was a, a small group of guys that each one of them was touched by cancer, many of them from Roswell Park. To do something for eight hours a day for 11 straight days is gonna be, I think, over and above anything I've ever done. What drives them isn't the physical aspect of it, it's gonna be more of the psychological aspect of it, and that's what's gonna get them through as, as well as the camaraderie of their, of their fellow teammates. We said, there's no way that they can do this, only to find out we were dead wrong. I did not expect to see a full Harbor Center on opening night. When people talk about cancer and finding a cure, they're extremely passionate about that. And then when people talk about hockey, they're passionate about that as well. One, two, three, four, it didn't matter what time of day it was, what the situation was. These guys were out there playing hockey. They were skating. They were trying to score. I'm like, it's okay. It's in the 1200s. That's only a two-digit scoreboard. People are watching them on YouTube and day five, looking at them at 2 a.m. just to pop in and see how they're doing, and they're still playing. It's it's surreal that the game has never stopped. They're in this event where they're many times probably thinking to themselves, why did I agree to do this? You just like, you lay there in your bed and you're just like, I don't know if I can do this today. You know, guys were dropping out and yeah, I was looking around thinking, are we gonna really make this thing? The demands on their body were <laughs> enormous, but they, they go forward, they continue on, they, they do their, their shift, as they call them, on the ice. Hurt everywhere right now. It hurts to stay on that skates. Physically tired, getting about two to three hours sleep a day. And the ambulance is showing up for IVs and all sorts of crazy injuries. It is a difficult situation. And they do this because they see they want to achieve their goal of raising this money for Roswell Park. And if you look at it, it's really what we do. I mean, we're it's a grueling thing uh, to find that cure for cancer or to because you're disappointed. It's not maybe what you thought, but you keep trying and you keep doing and you keep treating patients because at the end of the day, you want to achieve that goal. You want to save that patient's life. When there was uh, a day left and then when there were, there were just hours and minutes left, the excitement was you could just palpate it. Uh, good morning, it is uh, 2.43, the uh, morning of the last day of the 11 day power play. They could see the end. You know, they've been skating, their feet were swollen. Just getting ready for the last shift. It's been uh, one hell of a week, uh, come a long way. They weren't gonna quit. You know, they were gonna continue this. And they were gonna continue this because they wanted to raise all this money for Roswell Park. An amazing thing. I, I'm, I'm still, when I think about it, I'm blown away by it. This had so much more going on to it than just hockey. People stopping in, just grabbing us and, and saying how much it means to them to see people out there battling and fighting. I had a woman come up to me and she said, uh, see those two kids in the crowd? Uh, those are my kids and I just got a call from Roswell and my cancer is gone. And I want to thank you guys for what you're doing. And they not only raised money for Roswell Park, but they raised a lot of money for Roswell Park. So I didn't know the amount. He whispered that in my ear. 
I was so nervous about making sure that I said it in a way that made everybody excited. It was electric. We worked so hard. All these guys have worked so hard. We do believe in miracles. I mean, there were so many lessons to be learned by what they did. First one lesson to me, believe that when people have million dollar dreams, they will come true. It was more than just a hockey game because the monies that were generated there, uh, we're gonna discover so many more things. Uh, we're gonna be able to touch the lives of so many more people. For dreaming up this incredible and inspiring event, and for surpassing their lofty fundraising goal in the fight to end cancer, we award the Catherine Ann Joya Inspiration Award to the entire 11-day power play team.